the sky. Okay. Oh, they moving again. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Yes, got it. Jesus says nobody can say no. Okay. <laughs> Is he waving? I mean, what's he doing? I think they're clapping. They're doing some kind of Oh, clap. they're clapping. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you still a little bit better than me. I don't know what they're doing, okay? Got a little glare there. No. Jesus say yes. Okay, now I can see him. Praise <laughs> God. Please get it. When Jesus says yes, even the Nobody internet can't me. say no. Yes. It can, it can pause you for a moment, but it can't say no. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're gonna have Sean out of prayer, Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. dear Heavenly yeah. Father, I want to thank you for blessing us to come together again. Lord, I want to thank you for everything you've already done for us, what you're gonna do for us. And long as Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Lord, I just want to thank you for blessing us through this cold and flu season. Lord, thank you for uncongestion us. Lord, breathing through our lungs so we won't be sick. And God, I just want to thank you for just being wonderful, God, that you are and beautiful. And I'm in awe of you, A-W-E. And anybody know what I'm saying, I believe they'll feel I feel. God, you've been so, so, so good. I ask you to bless this Sunday school this morning, us, as we pray our way through here and get along through the message. And hopefully we get the greatest message it is out of it like we always do. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to be reading the first, it's 12 verses. So I think we're going to read three verses a piece. So uh, Exodus 23, we're going to read the scripture first, and then I'm going to go back to what I normally do. So we can get the okay. scriptures in. Okay? So mm -hmm. I'm going to have Gary start us out, the first three scriptures. And then Vanessa, behind him. Read such as thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. 
Thou shalt not follow a multitude of evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to wrestle judgment. Neither shalt thou uh, continent what am I right there? a poor man in his cause. Um, this is the NIV version, number four. If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to return it. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you falling down under its load, excuse me, do not leave it there. Be sure you help them with it. Do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. So then, oh, okay. Uh, keep this the uh, King James version. Keep the far from a false matter and the ins innocent and righteous slave thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise and per perverted the words of the righteous. And also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You want me to do 10? Uh-uh. Uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, baby. 10 through 12. And six years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. <laughs> but the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still that the poor of thy people may eat. Mm. And what they leave, the beast of the field should eat. In like manner, thou shalt deal with the vineyard and with the olive oil. Six days shall thou do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Amen, amen, amen. So we're we are talking today. The subject of the top, the lesson is justice and fairness. Justice and fairness. So I always start out with what today means. Uh, so it is 1 16 22. So one is is the number of unity. 16 is the duality of God's perfect love. And 22 is fruitfulness, us being blessed. This year is a year of blessing. The year is a year of overflowing fruitfulness for us, for God's people. So today's prophecy, what God shared with me, is that um, he wants to acknowledge that we have difficulty in, in society learning the difference between truth true love and real love and so we have to decide what true love is and what society says love is and i hear god told me today that he is the real he has the real love for all of us he showed it when he sacrificed everything to redeem us back to himself that is real love we do not always make the right choices but god always does and he still loves us let God's love live in us today so that we can show others true love through our behavior and actions for them. And so I just hear God saying that uh, we have this blockage in our society and a blockage in our families to a certain extent to know the difference between real love um, and, and to know the difference what God that showed us a, a perfect example of what love really is. And so he's just reminding us to get back in tune with that. So our prayer topic for this week, our prayer topic for this week, we will be praying all this week on this topic. Present. Being present. Being present. Um, and the scripture, the, uh, there's several scriptures, Isaiah 43 and 19, uh, John 14, 25 through 27, Acts 10 through 33, and 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. And so mm -hmm. I just want to put out what I believe God is saying about being present. So being present means that you're here in this moment, that you're not 
uh, like sometimes when we are in a, ch a service, we're thinking about uh, the food that we got to cook afterwards. But in, in that, while we're thinking about the future, we lose some moments in the present. And God wants us to be make sure that we're being present. In Isaiah 43, he reminds us that he's doing a new thing. So for you to understand and grasp a new thing, you got to be present. Uh, you can't take the old into the new. See, the problem is that in the past, we look at the past and we keep grabbing a hold of that past, but God is trying to do a new thing in us. And what I mean is, he is renewing us so that we can walk in this next season of our lives. Being <laughs> present being present so uh before i open it up for a comment i'm going to give you the background of exodus so exodus um the author of course is god and moses um they this is where they prepare for the deliverance they have been in captivity for 400 years it is one of the pentateuchs which is the five uh laws or tours of the bible it uh, they had a lot of suffering and God heard their cries. It talks about Moses' early years and how he behaved and how he got saved and how he was put into the, the palace. It talks about God's uh revealing uh his first revelation to Moses. It talks about how God sent Moses yeah, to confront Pharaoh. And an interesting fact, just so you guys know, Pharaoh. Is, is not a real name. It is a title. It is like king. It is the king of that era or the ruling party of that era. And so sometimes I forget to mention that it's not actually his name. His name is not Pharaoh. It is a title. They, he, he didn't even have, it wasn't even for them to even give him a name. They just said Pharaoh. So, but it also gives us an insight that the pharaohs of our lives are those people that are put, put into our lives that can hinder us from moving forward in God. Okay, I'm going to move on. Talks about the plagues, uh, the 10 plagues in the Bible. The first demonstration of God's uh, power. One of the first demonstrations of God's power was when uh, they he uh, threw the rod down and it became a snake. And, and what was so good about that and interesting about that is the uh, other powers that be see God has, I'm mean, just the enemy will try to make you believe he got power. They threw their little thing down and it became a snake too. But guess what? Moses snake ate they snake up. But anyway, we ain't gonna talk about that. I'm just saying the power of God can destroy whatever situation or circumstance we have going on. And so uh, Exodus, it, the word Exodus means to depart. Um, they are preparing to get out of there. They have a journey on to Mount Sinai. Uh, they have the experience of the Red Sea. Did anybody have a Red Sea experience where your back was up against the wall <laughs> and it seemed like you didn't have nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, mm -hmm. the enemy was about to overtake you? Well, guess what? The Red Sea might have been an Exodus, but we got Red Seas in our lives sometimes where we just have to step out on faith and believe God for a turnaround. Talks about them getting the Ten Commandments, which actually turned was more than that uh, until Moses decided he got mad and broke the, the commandments. But the Ten Commandments are based off of simple principles. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. That's pretty much it. Don't murder kids. I mean, they went through a whole lot, but really, love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. It's, it's pretty simple. If you look at, if y'all ever go back, go back and look at the Ten Commandments, and you'll see what I'm saying. Talks about how he brought out various laws, which brings us up to where we are today. So the title is, this is where you guys come in at. <laughs> the title is Justice and fairness. So I'm going to ask you, what is justice? Anybody? <laughs> what is justice? Uh, justice is um. Well, it, to me, justice is getting what you deserve. Mm. 
Um, that's what I think about. Um, it's a, a, a type of uh, fairness, you know, what's right um, type of thing. That's what I think of. Okay, that's good. That's good. Donna? Sound, I mean, it sounded great to me. I'm in total agreement with her. I thought Vanoi would have bust in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a question for Vanoi. Oh. oh, okay. So, uh, Brother Gary, Justice. We discussed it together before she said it. Oh, all <laughs> 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 of y'all in agreement. Uh, you gonna jump on board with them, or you want me to go with the question I'm gonna ask Vanoi? You gonna jump on his? Fairness. Vanoi, what's fairness? When you think of fairness, what do you think that is? Fairness. Yes, fairness. Oh, shoot. Fairness is a. Uh, hold on. Fairness. Fairness is when you're. Giving someone or whomever uh, it's the type of treatment without without any type of bias on uh, based on based on anything that you may see, hear, think. You just uh, fairness is giving someone the same base baseline and going from there, not treating them different because of this. Not treat them better because of this, not treat them better because of that. Fairness is saying, hey, at the baby, we're going to look at this. You're going to start at this baseline, and we're going to, I'm not, I, I don't really want to say judge, but you can say, you know, and judge righteously from that point, give you what you deserve or not give you what you don't deserve. It just depends. Okay. That was perfect. Perfect uh, rendition. Fairness. Uh, fairness, I believe, is um, pretty much what Brother Bernard said. Also, to add to that is, I think as human beings, we're, we're, we're unable to be fair with each other. I don't think it's in our hearts naturally. Uh, God can only give us true fairness. Um, Oftentimes, what we're going to do is we're going to treat those that treated us right, and we're going to give them what we feel like that they should deserve. But on that blessed day, uh, God is going to give, he's going to give out true justice when uh, he's going to uh, overlook a lot of our faults and look at our heart and see if we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And in the process thereof, God is going to allow us to pass through. But uh, in all fairness or in all righteousness, according to man, we have no right because we haven't did it all right. But we only get the fair justice. We only get the true justice is because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is that's phenomenal. You guys did a phenomenal job on that. Let's look at these verses here. In verse chapter 23 of Exodus, the first one tells us, do not, this is what I got out of what it said, do not repeat a false report. In other words, don't repeat lies and gossip. Don't repeat it. It says that right there. And the first thing I thought about is I had someone call me in reference to something that was put out about me and my family. And uh, uh, he, it was a warning. And see, he tried to warn me is what it was, that it was out there. But the information was false. So actually, it shouldn't have even repeated it. Yeah. If the information was incorrect, it was not true. It was just someone out of bitterness and evilness. Uh, trying to attack our character. And guess what? They don't win. God wins. God wins. And see, a lot of times what happens in our lives as Christians, 
People are out there trying to destroy our character knowingly and unknowingly. In other words, what I'm saying is sometimes we don't even realize they're out there trying to destroy our character. Yeah. But God does. And God sees all. And instead of me taking up for myself, God takes up for us. God is the one that takes up for all of us. Amen? Yes. Amen. So it says, don't repeat false reports. Yeah. And then it says, don't conspire with evil people. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That by itself reminds me, and it just puts in my mind to think about, you know how sometimes somebody says something and you might be mad at whoever it is that, that did whatever. And so you kind of agree with them to a certain extent. Yeah. Where, where you're wrong. You're not supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says don't conspire with evil people. Don't conspire with evilness. Mm-hmm. Because he also te- teaches us that when we do right, the enemy's going to come. Yeah. He's going to come to attack our character. He's going to come to attack us as a family. He's going to come to destroy. And sometimes he comes inside the family unit. I know y'all didn't hear me say that. But sometimes, it's not always. David said this. He said that somebody conspired against um, me. And it was somebody that was close to me. Yeah. He was talking about that. He was talking about Saul. So we got to keep that in mind when we uh, entertain evilness. And sometimes we entertain it unaware because we all upset about this, that, or the other. But we have to be careful when we do that. So I'm going to leave with one more thought. Because pretty much the rest of this is pretty much, I ain't going to say, it's common sense. Don't do evil for evil. Don't don't act like, uh, don't treat the animals just because you're mad at somebody else. Don't do that. And then it talks about the law of the Sabbath. How that we work seven, we uh, produce the land because they were ag- agriculture. They were, they were into agriculture. Agrarian. They were agrarian society. And so there was times where they had to produce on the land. And then there was times that they had to stop producing, that they let the land rest. And we know that God gave us six days to work and one day of rest. Because our bodies are made to rest. We ain't going to talk about too much of that. But I wanted to leave this one other comment with you guys. And then I'm going to let y'all comment because we're under our 10-minute thing because of the going in and out. But uh, bad, I want you to hear this. 1 Corinthians 13 and 33, but I'm paraphrasing. Bad company corrupts good character. Yeah. Watch who you're around. Watch who you entertain. Because they can corrupt you. If you're not, see, some people sow seeds in us, and we don't even realize that that seed has been sown. Until it comes out. And he'd be like, how did that, why? I don't understand. Entertain. Yeah. Some stuff you just don't need to entertain. Exactly. Good, bad, or indifferent. Some stuff you just need to be like, hmm, go on with that mess. Yeah. My daughter said it best. My mama and them is not about that mess. <laughs> she, said, oh. she said something else. I ain't going to tell that other part she said. <laughs> So we're about mm-hmm. that I'll take that somewhere else. We ain't got time for that. We don't have time for that. So I want each of us to take just a second to comment on the the statement. Good bad company corrupts good character. We're talking about justice and fairness. I just believe that as we come to God and get saved. He 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 makes us new. So when you in walking in your newness, you'll have all kind of demonic spiritual warfare that sees this, but you don't see the light that's over us. And so people just come and think you still that person. And oftentimes we as humans, we're not prayed up. 
which I love to pray. I have to sometime, well, actually all the time by myself, because that can throw me out. You come to tell me what somebody else said, that will make me start acting like the old shunning. So what I'm learning to do is to ask God to surround me with people that have bigger minds than me. And also, I got this key. I've started looking at the back of people's head. And I've noticed that some people with a small brain, all they do is talk about people. I'm going to buy my money. I'm trying to open up this new business. I don't really have time to talk about people. We're not talking about the Lord or how I can make this next million because I love that. You know, <laughs> it don't seem like we're going anywhere. I'm trying to buy a house. I'm got things, goals. But anyway, I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> so that's how I feel. Maybe I jumped off subject a little bit, though. Hey, it's all, it's all <laughs> inclusive. It, it went just in there. Uh, Brother Vinoy? Well, he can't. Oh, he can't. Uh, uh, it says evil communication corrupts bad habits. That's another version of it, but it's the same thing. But yeah, uh, first and foremost is that we have to realize that we're vessels. And what you subject yourself to is what you're being filled with. I mean, that's by default. It doesn't matter what you do. You're being filled with something, whether it's, uh, which is why Power on. instructed to uh, meditate in this word day and night as you're feeling yourself. Uh, but uh, it, it reminds me of how I used to, you know, in the, especially in the latter years of uh, my incarceration, my conversation changed, the things I wanted to hear changed. So, uh, certain people or when I would be sitting at a table, because you know, sometimes you could be sitting at a pe table and people would come there and they just start talking or whatever. And so sometimes uh, since my conversation was different or what I wanted to hear was different, you know, we don't, you know, we don't have the like, we don't have like minds. My mind has, my mind has been changed. So a lot of the conversation that y'all guys are going to have, I'm not into having that conversation. So I would remove myself because it's not something I want to hear. Uh, because like I said, we are vessels, you know, uh, that's, that's why it's not so good to always sit in front of the TV all day and things. I'm not, and I'm not talking about people, you know, who sit in front of, but I'm saying that you're being fed, whether, whether you realize it or not. So, uh, and what you're being fed eventually comes to the top. It's going to bubble to the top, whatever you put into a vessel, or into a cup, whatever you're pointing to that, eventually it's going to come out. So that's all I have to say about that. Amen. 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 Montgomery? Amen. 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 I agree with Brother Vinod. You know, uh, the, um, bad communication corrupts good character. You can be good and you hang with the wrong people, they, somehow you'll be judged just like the wrong people. <laughs> They'll forget about, you know, what you started out doing and the end uh, result will take over. That's why you gotta uh, 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 hang with the right people. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to associate yourself with good people. That's why me and my wife, we got Tanana, uh, we got you and Kelly, and we got the Lord them. We don't hang with anybody. When I go to work, I go to work. When I come home, I, I come straight mm -hmm. to the house. I don't go hang out with the fellows. I don't go do this and do that. I come home to my wife. In other words, what Vinod say, bad communication corrupt good character. Amen. Amen. You agree with the brother? You got nothing to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I mean, with it really, pretty, they all pretty much said, said it. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's one of those things where I guess even when Vanoa was talking, um, even before he started saying some of the things he did, uh, I was thinking about what we put in, um, what we watch, uh, the amount of time we spend in prayer, the amount of time we stay in the word. 
Um, even even in those times when we're dealing with difficult situations and we're, we're not bringing the word back to us to get us back on track, um, you know, those kind of things come to mind that those are, are very important as well to keep our mindset on him and, and the things that we have um, going, the things that God has going for us. You know what I mean? So all that stuff matters. All of those things matter. And um, we are set apart. Amen. Um, and so we rep, we represent him. So that's, those are things to keep in mind too, because e even when somebody comes that's got bad character and they're sharing whatever they're sharing with you, um, they need to see something different in you, not you line up with everything that they're talking about. But yeah. it's like, hey, maybe, and you could be someone that deters them from what they're doing and maybe look and say, you know, maybe I should be doing something different. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say on that. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just gonna say that um, if you know you know you're doing right for God, and you know you're doing something good for God, when uh, other people are attacking you, and uh, uh, seem like you they focal point, so mm -hmm. attacks attacks don't really bother me too much because uh, you kind of get used to it. Uh, but <laughs> this much you you, you this is where your confidence lies in that you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to mount a defense. Jesus Christ is your defense, and he's going to take care of you. 